In this video, I'd like to share with you the five steps to conduct a structural equation modeling. Uh, no need to memorize them. I just want to introduce a few terms to you. Um, so the five steps, let's say, they are model specification, model identification, estimation, test of fit, and re-specification. So by model specification, uh, I mean uh, uh, how to uh, you need to decide how to measure the constructs, how to measure the variables. And uh, this is about the measurement model assessment, right? So, for example, you need some instruments and uh, you need to know, for example, if you want to measure customer satisfaction, there may be different options available. So, which one do you want to choose? Or when you want to measure quality of life, there are many different instruments. You need to decide which one is the best one for your study. And then, uh, um, it, and then you need to decide about the, you need to specify the relationships between the variables and constructs. And to uh, specify the relationships between the factors or constructs between the variables, you need to have theoretical support. So, um, this I would say is the most important stage in your structure equation modeling, though it's not exactly about structure equation modeling. Because any mistake in this stage, later you may spend six months to collect your data, run the test, and then you face some issues, you identify some problems, and you have to start from the beginning if you made any mistake in this stage. So, to make sure that you have specified the model well, you need to do a very good literature review. So, be patient, spend enough, um, enough time on literature review, and make sure for the measurement model, you are choosing the best instruments the, uh, for your study and make sure that you have theoretical support and literature uh, to specify the structural model means the relationship between the factors or variables means about it's about the uh, hypothesis testing so two there are two models measurement model structural model measurement model how to measure the variables how the constructs number two structural model the relationship between the constructs or variables, let's say the relationship between um, satisfaction and quality of life, right? So you need to do a good literature review, very good literature review. Be patient, this is the most important step. Then model identification. So um, this means that number of parameters, uh, number of known parameters uh, must be more than number of unknown parameters. Uh, you know, this is actually the rule to solve an equation and don't forget this is about structural equation modeling. So it's about, it's a set of equations that we want to solve. Actually, the software will solve it for you, but uh, still um, this rule applies here. Number of known parameters must be more than number of unknown parameters. Let me give you an example. Suppose this equation, consider this equation, A equals B plus C. So if I say A is 10, can you solve this equation? No, because there is no answer. B can be 3, C can be 7. B can be 4, C can be 6. B can be minus 10, C can be 20. So you cannot solve this equation. Why? Because B and C, there are two parameters unknown. It's more than number of known parameters, which is A. So to solve this equation, there are different uh, approaches. One of them is to fix one of these unknown variables. Let's say I fix B at 4. Then I can find C. So if A is 10 and I fix B at 4, then C will be 6. So I could solve this equation by fixing one of the parameters. Uh, another method is I may assume B equals C. If I say B equals C, then B and C will be 5. So by these methods, I can solve the equation. So how I can apply it here in um, structure equation modeling? Uh, very easy. I mean, don't worry about it. It's because we don't want to solve the equations. The software will do it. But what you need to do is when you use Amos software, this is the, a model that we may use later. Number one, you need to fix um, one of the uh, factor loadings for each construct at one. You can see here, you see this factor, this, sorry, this item, this item, it's uh, loading, it's factor loading, has been fixed at one. Here for image, 
So image is another construct. And one of the items, the factor load is factor loading has been fixed at one. Here the same, here the same. So for each construct, make sure you already have fixed one of the uh, variable, one of the, sorry, one of the factor loadings at one. Number two, all error terms or disturbance terms, you see all these small uh, circles here, you need to fix their path at one. So by this method, you are identifying the model and you can solve, the software can solve the equations. Um, you also may, later I will show you some examples, you may, uh, you know, constrain some of the variables. You may say, okay, you may fix Let's say you may you may you may assume that these two paths, for example, are equals or whatever. Uh, but uh, the the rule that you need to follow is that so there are two things you need to check before running the model. Number one, fix the fact one of the factor loadings at one for each construct. Number two, all error terms path will be should be fixed at one. And then estimation. Uh, this is uh, Amos software analysis properties. Uh, window and there is a tab there for estimation it means the which algorithm you want to use to estimate the parameters So here there are five options available each of them have their own limitations and advantages uh, But just to give you some examples you can read more about them uh, yourself But unweighted least squares the good thing is there is no assumption about the distribution of the variables. So the normality assumption is not part one of the assumptions for unweighted least squares. However, uh, the results using this algorithm depends on the scale you use. For example, if you want to measure the distance between two objects um, using let's say meter or inch, the results will be different. And we don't want this, right? In, at least in the studies that we want to conduct. Uh, or you may want to use um, let's say weighted least squares. Here is unweighted least squares. There is another method weighted least squares. Um, weighted least squares, it doesn't have the issue of dependency on the scale of the measurement. So it's independent from, so it doesn't matter how you measure, um, you know, in my example, the distance between two objects, uh, you will get the same results. But you need a very large sample size here. You need a very large sample size. And in SCM, when I say very large sample size, it means maybe 10,000, 15,000, 50,000, 60,000. And it's not easy in most of the studies that we conduct. Um, anyway, each of the methods have their own limitations, advantages, but by default, we will go for maximum likelihood because at least it's not dependent on the scale you use and, and you don't need a very large sample size. However, you need to make sure that uh, multivariate normality assumption is met that we will discuss later. Um, so by default, this is maximum likelihood, no need to make any changes when you run the test. I just wanted to share with you that there are different tests and why maximum likelihood is the one that by default the software um, uses. And then test of fit. So we already discussed that um, in, AMOS, in SEM, uh, you first test the model and then if the model fit is good, then you will test the hypothesis. If the model fit is not good, you won't process, you won't go step, you won't go further to uh, test the relationship between the variables. And uh, as we discussed, good um, chi-square goodness of fit um, looks at the whole at the model as a whole. However, uh, it's too sensitive to sample size. And usually the results, if in most of the studies that we do, shows that the model fee is not good. But it doesn't mean that the model fee is not good, right? We discussed this before, because it's sensitive to sample size and we always have a few hundred cases and it impacts the results. So we report it though in almost all cases, almost all cases, all studies, it shows the results, the sample size is, I'm sorry, the model fee is not good because it's used to compare models. Um, however, there are many other some uh, many other uh, model fit indexes available, and because none of them um, is perfect, so we, re we refer to several of them to uh, claim that a model fit is good or not. Right? Uh, so generally, there are three groups of model fit indexes: absolute fit, incremental fit, and parsimonious fit. So by absolute fit, we mean um, I mean the absolute fit measures like chi-square, GFI, RMSR, Ramsey, and so on. 
they measure how well the hypothesized model fits observed model. You remember we have two models. Hypothesized model means the one that is your model, you develop based on literature and theory in your lab on a piece of paper, let's say. And we have observed model means the model that is in the real world, in the population. So they measure how well these two, I mean the hypothesized model fits the real world model. Uh, then incremental fit, it assesses the related position of the model between the worst fit to perfect fit, right? So their examples are TLI, NFI, RFI, IFI, CFI. Uh, these are just abbreviations. You can Google to know the full name of these indexes. They have developed by different researchers over years. And we have parsimonious fit. So it is used to compare models with different number of parameters, right? Uh, so to make a decision whether a model fit is good or not, we usually refer to absolute fit and incremental fit. And AMO software actually provides a long list of model fit indexes. And as I said, um, they fall into these three main groups. And there are three rows in the tables of model fit. So this has been copy paste from AMOS output. So you will get this for your model as well. So there are always three rows. The first, la the first line or the first row shows the values for your model, right? Saturated model shows the value for, so these are the things for, uh, the values for what's called the, a perfect model. An independent model is the worst model you may have. You remember here, I just said position of the model between worst to perfect fit means, <coughs> and the examples are here, right? So this means that, yeah, here, for example, these are incremental fit, right? Incremental fit models. And uh, this is the worst model. So the worst model, the value will be zero. Perfect model will be one. So NFI for our model in this example is 0 0.871. IFI is 0 0.94. What does it mean? This means if it's 0 0.94, it means you can improve the model just by 0 0.06 points. And there is a threshold, there is a threshold to accept a model. For incremental models, for example, these models you can see, these model fit incremental indexes, fit indexes like NFI, RFI, all in this table. And also for GFI, the threshold that we accept is 0 0.9. This means if the value for the model, IFI for example, for the model is greater than 0 0.9, we accept the model. So we refer to several of them to accept a model, right? So when you see, for example, here I see there are some that are good. I may claim the model fit is good, right? So it doesn't mean all model fit indexes should be good, right? I will tell you a rule of thumb later uh, to decide which indexes to be reported and referred to. But um, so the first table is about chi-square. And here you can see chi-square value 869 for this model, degree of freedom and p-value. You remember I told you the chi-square uh, in most cases is significant and here is significant. It's less than 0.05. This means based on the chi-square results, this model is not good. But we know this is because most probably, I mean not more, yeah, we know this can be because of the large sample size. So we don't rely on this to make a decision. And this is chi-square per degree of freedom. Uh, anyway, so what I'm saying here, I just want to show you that there are different indexes. You see, there are so many indexes and this is, this, uh, these are part of the indexes you get. So we refer to some of them that we will discuss later to make, to say model fit is good or not. And the last stage is re-specification. Suppose your model fit is not good. The software will provide some solutions to improve the model fit. What I want to tell in this uh, part is, do not, you should not blindly follow the software AMOS suggestions to improve the model fit. Why? Because they are all based on statistical results. You need theoretical support for them too, right? So if you have theoretical support, um, you can follow the suggestions. So you will later see, you will, you will receive a long list of suggestions to improve your model fit. But we cannot follow, apply all of them. We only accept those suggestions that have theoretical support too. But don't worry, I know when I said theoretical support, everyone get nervous. Don't worry, I will share a rule of thumb again with you to just uh, easily know which suggestions should be applied. Um, so don't forget this important rule. 
we do not just uh, apply whatever suggestions the software, uh, whatever changes software suggests. Um, yep. So this was just, so what, um, what I want to tell you here is, um, no need to memorize all these five steps and even um, um, no need to, uh, I mean, don't think that we will do all these you know, things uh, exactly like uh, what I explained to you. Actually, what I wanted to do is just to introduce a few terms and just briefly tell you what we want to do. Later, when we use the software and we uh, um, test a model, um, then you will find it's very easy. So from this video, if you just got maybe 10% of what I told you, that's fine, no problem.